So, so, so tell me about this place you're going to take us. Okay, so we're going to Jack Peters Creek. Okay. It's, uh, it's early, 6.30 a.m. The uh -huh. mist is still in the air. A little chilly. Yeah. Everything's wet around us. But then this is the coastal environment, so it's often like this in the summer. Right, and it's a full moon, so that means there's a negative tide in the morning, and that's the best time to go out and get the seaweed. A lot of people go out and, and harvest sea vegetables? Uh, there are four companies on the coast. I know that a lot of locals harvest for their own consumption. And then the companies that do harvest need a license, a commercial kelp license. But it's wonderful having an ocean as an office. Yeah, <laughs> that is a great office to have. <laughs> Hello, friendly viewers, and welcome to California's beautiful Mendocino Coast. We are so pleased and honored to be joining raw foods guru, Cherie Saria, on this unique excursion to harvest sea vegetables. As an author, chef, and founder director of the renowned Living Light Culinary Arts Institute, Cherie is often regarded as the mother of raw food gourmet cuisine. She has helped instruct and certify hundreds of raw food chefs through Living Light, including world famous chef Roxanne Klein, Chef Chad Sarno, and Chef Elena Love. A vegetarian for over four decades and well accomplished with numerous awards, Ms. Cherie Saria shares in an interview what she finds most gratifying. My devotion to teaching vegetarian foods for 35 years has saved the lives of countless innocent animals, and that dwarfs any of my other accomplishments. Today, we're taking an early morning trip to the beach with Cherie and Terry Nieves from Ocean Harvest Sea Vegetable Company. Good morning, everyone. I'm Sherry Soria, and I'm here with Terry Nieves, and we're on the Mendocino Coast getting ready to harvest sea vegetables, and I am so excited. Terry is from Ocean Harvest Sea Vegetable Company. That's a local sea seaweed harvesting company here in Mendocino. And I'd like you to tell us, Terry, a little bit about what you do. Okay. Well, we come out at the new and the full moon uh, during the summertime when the seaweed has grown and we harvest with our harvest knives and they look like this and then we put it in bags take it inland dry it and then sell it to restaurants and mail order and people all over the world and how does the harvest here on this on the mendocino coast compare with other areas where they harvest sea vegetables well we have specific seaweeds here that are found nowhere else one of them is sea palm and it's definitely regulated so that it doesn't get over harvested Oh good, and that's the, the one that we use at Living Light the most often is the, is the silky sea palm right. or the immature young sea palm. And right. what's so beautiful about sea palm is that they actually look like little palm <laughs> trees. But anyway, it's going to be really fun out there and what kinds of sea vegetables do you think we'll find? Uh, we're going to be harvesting some wakame and alaria and uh, sea palm. And we're going to look for some silky sea palm. At this time of the year, most of the juvenile sea palm has already matured, but we may be able to find some. When we harvest the sea palm, I know that when I when I harvest it, I have to just cut the. I always think of giving it a haircut, you know, right. <laughs> cut off the, uh, the what do you call the them? frond the tips. frond tips. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then that way they grow back again, yeah. just like our hair. You never yeah. want to pull it off of the rocks. Right, you don't take the stem because then it won't grow back. You harvest just the frond tips because then the spores um, are released from the tips where you've just cut and they will produce more. Oh, that's the reason. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's great. Okay, well, let's stop talking about it. Let's do it. Okay. Okay. <laughs> now, is this usually underwater? Yes. Okay. So that's why it's so wet. It's not just the fog. Oh, and you have to be careful you don't step on all these, uh, these little plants. We've already cut these earlier in the season. And these are the silky sea palm. They're much smaller, the baby plants, the more juvenile ones. And they're much more delicate in flavor and also in texture. When you chew them, they're just softer in your mouth. They're really beautiful. So we take it like a ponytail and then take our little hook knife and leave probably about three inches on there and then just cut it off like that. Mm. And then you want to make sure you get all of the mm. fronds because you don't want to leave any. It, it, uh, it messes with the reproduction. In a bed like this, we would probably harvest about 20% of these plants, uh -huh. maybe 30. Hmm. 
And then as you can see, because we harvested these big ones, there are these smaller ones that are growing down underneath now. Oh, this is so exciting. I love this. We'll be back soon after this brief message. You're watching Supreme Master Television. Welcome back to Vegetarianism, the noble way of living. Let's learn more about these extraordinary and nutritious sea vegetables. <clears throat> so now we're going to get some Alaria. It's a little farther out. Okay. And it's very long. Wow. I'm trying to find a really nice piece that hasn't been torn up yet. So the way that you harvest this is you start up here, leave some on there just like you did on the sea palm, and then just cut it across. That is beautiful. Look at that. <laughs> Look at that. You'll notice that this has a really thick rib in the middle. When we take it inland and dry it, uh, we cut it in pieces about this big, mm -hmm. and then lay it side by side so it doesn't blow off the table. <laughs> and can we harvest some of the, the, the sweet uh, kombu? kombu also? Yes. What I love about the kombu is the mouthfeel. It's got that um, <laughs> kind of mucilaginous, yeah. uh, like okra. Yeah, when it you does. chew it it, 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 it releases it. These kind of grow like a cabbage does. Uh -huh. As you can see it coming up right there. And this is a pretty broad leaf too. I didn't realize it was such a broad mm -hmm. leaf. This one is the highest in polysaccharides. That was, that's what makes it so sweet. This is kelp floating out here. And we harvest just the frond tips. I didn't know it was this close. I don't know if I can get any, but we harvested some already so you can see what it looks like and taste it. Oh, good. And then how do you prepare that? Um, you eat it just like a chip. We call it sea chips. Sea chips. Mm -hmm. So you, you cut it and dehydrate it and mm -hmm. make it into chips? Yep. Uh -huh. These are very mucilaginous, slimy, alginate. Uh huh. And these are just the frond tips. So you leave the bulb and the, the anchor on there and you just harvest just the frond tips off. This is very tender. Mm hmm. Mm. That's a good one. Mm. I love it. And then the other one that we harvested earlier this morning is kombu. This one's very thick, but it grows on a, a stem. We call them walking sticks. And then you cut it off of the stick and take it inland and dry it like this, and it turns black. And, uh, and this is mucilaginous also? Oh, yes. This well, you know, very, um, very medicinal. Sea vegetables are, um, are, are gelling agents, and so mm -hmm. we can use sea vegetables like agar agar and Irish moss mm -hmm. as, as gelling agents in desserts and other foods. And thickeners. They, yeah. All of them are. They all have that gelling ability. Very interesting. Now, this is more crunchy. <laughs> They're all so different. Right. You dry it and powder it, or how is it prepared? No, I just dry it, and usually people buy it that uh, do cooked food. Mm -hmm. You can use it in your beans. It helps with flatulence. Mm. Um, That's right. This is what you can make cook, it in stews. You put it in your cooked uh -huh. beans. Japanese make dashi with it. Oh, for the broth. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and what a calm day. I'm very grateful to the ocean for being so mm -hmm. calm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> As you can see, it's kind of rubbery. It's really tough. We usually harvest nori in March, so that's how old this is, from uh -huh. March to July. It's like, it's like paper thin, uh -huh. like, like plastic film. Yes, yeah, so the nori is only one cell wall thick. One cell wall mm -hmm. thick. Wow. That is fascinating. So normally they would take nori like this and of course I know that you can just dry it and use it this way, mm -hmm. but they also process it and lay it out in sheets and dry mm -hmm. it like that to use as a wrapper. Mm -hmm. 
Well, you have to be discerning um, yes. with any time you're harvesting any kind of uh, gifts from the earth. But with sea vegetables, <laughs> at least here on the coast, there's only one that's really not, that's, that's right. really, it's not, I shouldn't say not edible, but not good for you to eat, right? Would you, would you say it's toxic or? It is toxic, but you can taste it right away because it has a, a, an acid taste to it. It will definitely spark on your tongue immediately. Uh -huh. So we're pretty safe then. If it mm -hmm. tastes good, we can eat it when right. it comes to sea vegetables. Right. So of course you have a commercial license, but is it okay for us to come out here and just graze on the sea vegetables as long as we're not taking them and selling them? I think that you could probably come out here and eat them. If you wanted to harvest, you can harvest. Uh, you'd have to have a, a license. Oh. Then you can harvest 10 pounds of wet per day oh. of wet seaweed, which is not very much. We can usually get about 200 pounds when we're out here. Uh -huh. And you can't harvest the sea palm. That's the only one that's regulated. Because, because that's it only grows here. Or it only grows here. Uh -huh. Okay. In the whole world. Wow. Well, anybody that wants to buy sea palm, they can get it from Living Light online at rawfoodchef.com and it will have been harvested by Terry because we get it from Ocean Harvest. I know that when I was a little kid growing up in Santa Barbara, we used to play with these and we, we would be, you know, we would Whip go like around. this, yes, and try to catch catch each other with it and tie each other up and everything else. Um, it really is a lot like a rope. And this part right here is the part that That's we were the eating edible part. earlier. Yes. Yeah. So that's great. Well, this has been really fun, Terry. Thank you so much for bringing us oh, out on welcome. this adventure. And uh, if you want to contact Terry, Terry, you want to give us your contact information? Sure. OHSV.net. Ocean Harvest Sea Vegetables, that stands for .net. I I'm really happy now to know the source of our sea vegetables for Living Light. And thank you all for joining us today. We had a great time out here on the Mendocino Coast. Thank you. What a refreshing way to start the day. Please come back and join us again tomorrow on Vegetarianism, the Noble Way of Living. Chef Cherie Saria will meet us in her kitchen at Living Light Culinary Arts Institute and show us how to make a sea vegetable and cucumber salad with the sea palm we had harvested. And coming up now is Between Master and Disciples here on Supreme Master Television. May cool ocean breezes and sunshine warm your heart and uplift you always. For more urgent details, please visit www.suprememastertv.com forward slash VEG.